Hi, it's Kara, and today I'll be doing my June wrap up because it's July 1st and I read 24 books in June. So I'm going to try and make this as quick as possible. So I'll be telling you what I've read and a quick rating of it. I won't go into much crazy detail about what I thought or anything. I've done some reviews for some of these, um, so I'll link them down below. So essentially I have too many books to go into detail about them. But if you want me to review something I haven't reviewed, and I'll let you know what I have reviewed as we go along, just let me know down below. I have put a review of all of these on Goodreads. Um, I'll try to remember what rating I gave them on Goodreads. They may not match up exactly, but I'll try. So first off this month, I read a bunch of books by Kathy Rikes. I only have one here today because I did lend the rest out to a friend of mine um, and some of them were ebooks. So to start off the month, I read uh, Seizure by Kathy Rikes. This is about um, a group of teenagers that have like sci-fi based wolf powers, kind of like werewolves. Um, and in this one, they're trying to figure out and find this hidden treasure in order to save their community, essentially. I gave this four out of five stars. Then after that, I read Shift by Kathy Rax, which is a viral novella coming into this series. Um, and it was just light and fun and short and the kind of thing I needed to break up the series. I have trouble reading any kind of length of a series without breaking it up in the middle. I just get bored like halfway through a book and then I don't want to keep going. It's just like I've smushed myself with too much knowledge and content from that series and I need to just take a break. So I figured out that if I break series up and only read like small parts I can get through it quicker and not give it up and not touch it for three years. So that's what I did with these by breaking up the novellas which was handy. So I think I gave Shift 3 out of 5 stars, just because it was a novella. It was light and fun, but it didn't have much depth to it. Then after that, I read Code by Kathy Rags, which is the next major novel in this, like, full-size novel in the series. Um, I really liked Code. I think Code's my favourite one out of the whole series. And I gave it 5 out of 5 stars. It was much better than the others. I felt that the characters weren't so annoying which had been part of my problem with the rest of the series. So then after that I read Swipe which is the next novella. Again I think I gave it three out of five stars just because it's cute and light and it tied in well with Kathy Rags's adult series which I enjoyed. Um, so three out of five stars. And then after that I read Exposure which is the fourth and currently latest book in the viral series. And I gave it, what did I give it? I think I gave it 4.5 out of 5 stars. It wasn't as good as Code, but it was it was reasonably okay. It was pretty good. I was impressed. So <laughs> Then I also picked up a couple of e-novellas that were part of series I'd already read um, or books I'd already read. So I picked up Six Earlier Days, which is a very short e-novella by David Levithan following after... Um, every day, uh, which is up on my shelf. Up, oh, just, just, just. Nah, I can't do this. Just, just there. There it is. Um, I really liked this. I thought it gave a good insight into the content of the main novel. Um, I think I gave it four stars ish, but again, it was really short. I think I read it with another novella. Like I read three in one day or something. Like it was really short. I th and I think the one I read with it was Free 4, which was just a free e-novella from um, Veronica Roth from the point of view of 4 during Divergent, I think it was in. Um, again, really short. It was like one chapter um, from the book told from a different perspective. But it was free and I hadn't read it before and I've tr I've kind of made it my mission to start reading the novellas and things that come out in the series I read. I tend to go, oh, it's just an ebook. oh well. And they often don't play a major role in the story as a whole, so I just, eh. 
but I'd heard about the Four Collection coming out soon, which I'm really excited about. But it's going to come out as a novel. So I thought I'd also better read Free Four, even though it came out ages ago. It was just called Free Four because it was free and it was about four. I, I thought it was the lamest title ever. It should have had a better title, but oh well. Oh well. So I read that as well. And I also, quickly while I'm at it, I'll talk about some e arcs I read. While I'm also not got things in my hands. Um, so I read six arcs this month. All from NetGalley. Um... Some came from Bloomsbury, who was lovely and gave me access to a whole bunch of their stuff. Some came from um, Penguin, who did the same. And there's also a couple of other small publishers in here that approved me for some e-arcs of their books from NetGalley. So thanks to those guys. Thank you to NetGalley. You're great. Um, so first off, I read Take Back the Skies. Uh, by Lucy Saxon. This was a, like, dystopian steampunk kind of thing. It, I enjoyed it. I felt the writing needed some work. I think I gave it 3.5 stars. I just felt that the author wrote it at a very young age, so it was not very mature in its writing style, which let it down a little bit, but the plot was really good. The next on my list is I Morgana, by Felicity Pullman. I've loved everything else Felicity Pullman's ever written. I feel like I really loved her Janna mysteries. Um, but this, for me, just was a bit bland. I didn't feel enough for the characters. The action was very distanced and I just didn't connect well with it. I think I also gave it about 3 stars, 3.5 stars. I just it was missing something for me. I don't know. Then I also read Paradigm by Kerry A. Lowe which I loved. This was amazing. It was the best kind of dystopian apocalyptic novel I think I've ever read, primarily because it followed both the apocalyptic side and the dystopian society side and really showed how you could have good intentions to rebuild a society perfectly that would remove all the problems of the world while still producing this problematic thing that had a life of its own and turned against the people it was hoping to protect. And I found that really, really interesting. And I'm excited to see what happens in the next novel in the series because it is going to be a trilogy, I think. And I'm just, oh, it was so good. Five out of five stars. I recommend you read it if you can get it. Um, I think it's available in the States, though I don't think it's available in Australia yet. I'm not sure. I had a look for it at work and couldn't find it on the internet to like order in to work. But I really, really loved it. Really recommend. Go get it because it's amazing. Um, next on my list is Drowned by Nicola Riley. I really liked this as well. I think I gave it 4.5 out of 5 stars because I thought the ending was a bit rushed. But overall, a really good dystopian novel. Focuses on the idea of a flood that comes in, much like Paradigm. Paradigm is also a flood. But um, in the two different societies, they worked very differently. Like in Paradigm, they went underground in a big like submarine and then came back up and re rehabilitated the world when the flood was gone. Whereas in Drowned, they took to living on this small high peak of an island, of a mountain essentially, that had been built that became an island and a, um, a high concrete slab that was above water level and the water was still high and the, the, it was turned almost to a, like, they lost a lot of the, the stuff they had. I can't, like, it, it was a society regressed, if that makes sense. So it kind of went back to, like, an island kind of way of living where they were just fishing um, like trying to survive, very survivalistic. Like imagine Survivor if every night they had to climb onto a platform so that they didn't drown and didn't get attacked by swordfish. Kind of like that. Um, but the ending was very rushed and I didn't like that. So uh, 
Then after that, I read The Merciless by Danielle Vega. This was really good. Not the kind of thing I normally read. It's a horror, um, young adult horror novel. I'm not a big horror fan normally, but I really enjoyed this. I think it's one of the most interesting things I've read. I thought it did great things for my taste in reading. Um... I think if you were a fan of horror novels, I don't know how great it would be, but I'm I'm not. So it was a new experience to me and I really enjoyed it. I think I gave it 4.5 or 5 out of 5 stars. It was really good. I recommend you go out and get it. And the cover's really pretty and like, ah, even though of course I only had an e-arc, so I don't have the cover. Then finally, in the last of my e-arcs, I read... Searching for Sky, which was um, another kind of, not really, it was a contemporary with dystopian-esque qualities, but not really. Um, it seemed a bit like that at the start. So essentially, a girl and a boy are trapped on an island, um, but they don't realise they're trapped because they've, of course, been there their whole life. Um, but they were in a boat crash when they were very young, and the, the boy's dad and the girl's mother and the two kids were the only ones that survived um and then suddenly they get rescued and it's kind of about them trying to reintegrate into American society and realizing like and the people around them realizing that they have lived this lifestyle in which they were very competent but they know nothing about all of the things that Americans view as important like money and uh, knowledge of historical events and things like that. So that was really interesting. Um, I, I actually really enjoyed it. Um, there were times that I felt it was a little bit slow. Uh, there wasn't much action happening, which I was a bit sad about, but I guess it was more a thinking novel, which I appreciate. So I think I gave it 4.5 or 4 out of 5 stars. It was pretty good. I enjoyed it. Okay. The next book I have here that I read in the month of June, oh, there's so many, is The Diviners by Libba Bray. This is uh, about, um, like, psychics and other kind of paranormal people in 20s New York. This was so good. It's long, very long. Um, I think it took me a couple of days to read, but, oh, man, it was so good. Oh, I'm so desperate for the next one. Um, the crime itself and, like, because it is following, like, a string of crimes um, and them trying to resolve the issue because it is a paranormal-based crime. Um, the crime itself was mind-blowing and the characters were filled with depth and just... I loved everybody. <laughs> there was no character I hated except the evil people, like you're supposed to hate, but you love to hate them. And I loved that as a reader, you kind of knew what was going on with the crime before anyone else did. Um, and I kind of liked that. Um, I really enjoyed getting that glimpse into what was happening without knowing how it's going to resolve. So that was really interesting, and I'm really excited for The Lair of Dreams, which comes out next year, I think. So I'm excited. I really enjoyed this. Five out of five stars. Then next I read another e-novella, because I read a lot of those this month, and it was Bones of the Lost by Kathy Rikes. This is a um, e-novella for her adult series rather than for her young adult series. Um, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, it was a bit longer. It focused on a crime and solved it. Um, but once again, Temperance Brennan, take your phone with you. Just make sure you always have your phone in your pocket. My one piece of advice to you. My one piece of advice. And I think I gave this 3.5 or 4 out of 5 stars. Probably 4 out of 5 stars. And then following on from that, I also read Bones of the Lost by Kathy Rikes. I read this for the Week of Wisdom Readathon, which my last bunch of videos were all about. So you can check them out. Um, I really, really enjoyed this. 5 out of 5, no, 4.5 out of 5 stars because I did kind of from the start see 
what the crime was when no one else did, in the, no, none of the characters did, but I didn't guess the who and the exact details, I just kind of guessed the what, so I guess that was okay. Um, but really engaging, I flew through this in a day, I guess that was the point of the readathon, read a book a day, but I really loved it, it was good, it was just, ah, uh, Tempered Brennan, ah. Uh, just start re watching Bones again. I'm really also excited for Bones Never Lie, which comes out August, September, so I'm excited about that as well. Then next I read a trilogy. I read the first two in the week or two leading up to the week of was re 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 readathon. And I read the third one during the readathon, and that is the Secrets of the Eternal Rose trilogy, which is Venom. Belladonna and Starling. These were <laughs> great. Like, I wouldn't call them five star reads because I think things have been better, and that's kind of how I base my five stars. If you were the cream of the crop, you get five stars, otherwise, you're kind of at a four star. But these were really enjoyable reads. Um, they're about a secret society in um, period Venice because it doesn't really specify a time period, but you can kind of guess it's like 1600, 1700 Venice, just from like details about their clothing and things like that. Um, and this girl's parents were killed by this society and there's all this drama and there's like um, criminal elements, like crime-based things to it and love triangles and all that kind of stuff. And I really enjoyed these. They were very good. Um, 4.5, uh, 4.5, 4 out of 5 stars the whole way through. Good. Then also in the Week of Wisdom Readathon, I read The Reluctant Assassin, which is the first book in the Warp series by Ian Colfer. This is his new middle grade series for, like, fans of Artemis Fowl. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm a fan of Artemis Fowl. And this was really good. I did find the characters a bit flat at first, but they grew on me. Um... Really, really solid read. I think I gave this four out of five stars, and I'm excited for the sequel, which should be in my hands in the next week or so. And then I also read for the readathon the statistical probability of love at first sight by Jennifer E. Smith. Um, this is a cute contemporary, and it's short. And I zoomed through it, and it was cute and adorable, and I gave it four out of five stars. That's all I have to say. Then next, I finished off a series that I absolutely, absolutely adore, and that is the Chronicles of the Imaginarium Geographica series. I just spoiled it to you. I showed you a bit. And so I read the sixth book, The Dragons of Winter, and the seventh book, The First Dragon. They're a bit shiny because I have pra uh, plastic protective covers on them. Um, these two books were so good. They were such a good end to the series. If I had time, I would have marathoned the whole series. But I don't have time to read five books. And they're not super short either. The final one was a bit short. Um, but it, like, gave enough in the story that it didn't matter. And I just... I love this series. If you like history, if you like, history, if you like fantasy, if you like mythology... Give this series a go. It is, like, so good. Just, it is worth it. The first one's called Here There Be Dragons. Um, I'm just... <sighs> it is so worth reading. So worth picking up. Go do it. Go do it. And then finally this month, which I... This book I only finished yesterday, but I did finish it in the month of June, so I'm going to talk about it. And that is Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn. Um, this is a psychological thriller, a uh, husband's wife, husband's wife, the wife of a guy, goes missing on their anniversary and it follows um, both the wife and the husband, um, or the wife's diary anyway, and the husband, um, as they're trying to figure out who took her, essentially. And <laughs> I don't even know, I think I gave this four out of five stars, only because Maybe I gave it 5 out of 5. I don't even know. I just, I don't know what to think about this. It was so... Ah. But I, I guess in a good way. I don't know. I don't know if I enjoyed it. But it was, I was still reading it. I kept reading it. I just couldn't stop. I was just... Because 
I couldn't put it, well, I could put it down. It wasn't that engaging. Not like a Matthew Rattler novel where you physically cannot put it down. But I kept wanting to find out what was happening. And although not much action actually happens in this book, it's not an action book, it's a psychological thriller, I still felt there was so much tension and so much, ah, oh, I understand why this got thriller of the year. People should read it. I kind of want to talk about it with people. People need to read it and then comment below and let me know so you can, like, give me things because I'm freaking out. I'm freaking out. So that's all the books I read this month. Yeah, I read a bunch. I'm kind of proud. <laughs> um, but I've also been on holidays. I had exams for the first two weeks and then holidays for the second two weeks. So I just shoved a whole bunch of books in there and read as fast as I could. Because, yay. So, I will be filming my July TBR. I've already started reading for the month, of course. But I'll film a July TBR right now, which will be up in a couple of days. Or, like, tomorrow once this goes up. Because this will take a day to upload. <laughs> but, yeah. So, I hope you're having a good day. Tell me what you're, you read in the month of June. If you've read any of these books. Tell me, because I want a fangirl with people, so put that down below. Do that. Put that in the doobly-doo. And I'll see you soon with my July TBR, because it's July. Whoop, whoop. Okay, I'm going to go now. Bye!